Grace and peace be to each of you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is indeed the Christ, the Anointed One of God, and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that your word is indeed a lamp to our feet and a light to our paths. Lord, it is indeed exactly what we must have in these days of increased trouble. Heavenly Father, we pray today as we look at what's going on in our world, we pray, Father, that you would just keep driving us to your word, that lamp to our feet. We pray, O oh Lord, that your word, you know, would be that, that, that stabilizing force that we need in these days that we are going through. And we thank you that you are our constant presence. We pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, it's March 1st. Next week you get to spring forward. Do you feel like springing? <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, so anyway, we're going to spring forward next week. But anyway, what we're going to do today is we're going to take stock of what's going on in our world so far this year. We're going to start with um, a video. It's actually 20 minutes long in its entirety, but I shrunk it down to 10 minutes. And we're going to take a look at some of the things that's been going on. Now, this is things happening in January. This particular fellow who puts these videos together, he, he does them at the end of every month. Well, yesterday was the end of the month, so he's not going to get February done. So we're going to look at what he gathered together as events going on around the world for January. And then we're going to get into some other things and we'll conclude, well, we won't conclude, but we will include, include the coronavirus and what's going on there and those kinds of things. So we're going to start with this particular uh, video to see some of the things that are going on. say to Canadians who are sending their sympathy <coughs> Тропы копать понял, что бесполезно, что вот здесь снега больше двух метров. Завтра дунь с другой стороны, если задуется нахер.
Take a good look at this video. Those are kids playing in the gymnasium when suddenly the roof behind those curtains blows in. It's an intense gust of wind and it shoots debris straight into the gym. Watch again. These people running away the moment they hear that collapse. The curtain impassable. The locusts began crossing into Kenya late last month, destroying grazing land in the semi-arid northeast. They have now spread to the south and many farmers say their crops are at risk. The government has taken desperate measures to tackle the crisis. From flames to flash floods. Just a week ago, staff at this nature park were protecting their animals from oncoming bushfires. Estourado. Está ouvindo o barulho? Olha o bem-vindo. Tá quase na placa do bem-vindo. Lá em cima, ó, no segundo andar do nada. Gente, carro tá sendo carregado, gente. Vamos orar, pelo amor. Nome. Earlier this evening, the Davis County Sheriff's Office released the name of the 18-year-old whose life was cut short. Oh my god.
حقين جدة نقهرو حقين الرياض نقهرو حقين رفحة الدمام That, those were some of the things. Wasn't that a mess? <laughs> January is long. Well, here's a, here. Let's see. February 5th, a hun hundreds of tons of fish died suddenly in a lake in Indonesia. January 24th, thousands of dead fish wash up in a lagoon in Argentina. Uh, let's see. Thousands of dead fish wash up in a beach in Finland. Hundreds of thousands of fish dead in river due to bushfires in north southwest Australia. Uh, January 16th, 100,000 plus fish dead due to heat in, get this, Bristol Bay, Alaska. Heat. 2,000 deer dead due to disease in Oregon. January 13th, thousands of dead fish wash up in Sao Paulo, Brazil. January 10th, thousands of dead fish wash up in, uh, in France. Hundreds of thousands of birds killed due to disease in the Dominican Republic. One billion animals now fear dead from the fires in Australia. And so on and so forth. And then, of course, we have the coronavirus. Lots going on, right? A lot of odd stuff is right. So I don't think it's so very odd. I think it's where we are in the biblical timeline. And because of that, it's, it's really, um, now, is, now, is, now is the time that we were born for such a time as this. We would not be here if God did not want us here. And so, you know, which is why you have the particular Bible passages that you have listed in your bulletin. You know, Jesus said, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See to it that you're not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And then, of course, you've got Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. You know, the, the scriptures is where we go. We've got to go there. We have to know, you know, those, those words of God that bring us hope, bring us comfort. 
in times of trouble. Regarding the coronavirus, I pulled off all things corona from, uh, from the Elijah list. So since it's the Elijah list, you know it's going to be very uplifting. Okay? So that's, uh, that's a very good thing. And uh, so here you go. Got a couple copies. So anyway, all things corona. But the very first page is the one I want you to focus on, which is why it's on the top. Where did that come from? The internet. <laughs> anyway, uh, on all things corona, Johnny Enloe, who I really do appreciate as a prophetic voice, he, he said he got a word from the Lord. It says, faith will decimate the coronavirus. And he says, what faith does? He says, here is something new and important I just heard from the Lord regarding the coronavirus. This is what the Lord told him. He says, he was there when the virus was being engineered. It is an engineered virus. It did come out of a level four lab. And, he, and it says here, and he, meaning God, did his own counter-engineering without them knowing about it. God, God was there in the lab when the people who had, e had evil intents were making the coronavirus, and God put his own special touch on it. Okay? So it says here, in his tinkering, in God's tinkering, he has caused it to be the most susceptible to be affected by faith virus that has ever existed. So in other words, this virus is, a, is affected by faith. Get faith near it, and it's going to flee. Yeah, it's evil. So anyway, so it says here, he put a drop of something into the sinister engineering and it absolutely destroys the virus when exposed to faith. Prayers of faith, actions of faith, stands of faith. The virus can smell faith and is decimated by it. So we stand firm in the faith, in, in the face of this particular virus, and it does no harm. Okay? Yes, yes. He knew exactly what was going on. The enemy meant it for evil. But what God is doing through it is he's bringing good out of it. Already, and as part of one of these articles here, there have been all kinds of miraculous cures and things like that. Already in China and other places. So that, you know, what's happening is this virus was not from God. It was engineered by human beings. But it is causing people to cry out to the Lord. And then, you know, he is answering their prayers. It is causing people to go and tell them about Jesus. And people are responding to that. So that is a really good thing. The virus being engineered by man to do harm is not a good thing. But what God can do through it is a very good thing. So anyway, uh, Johnny Enlow said, he said, I, I heard the roar of the virus turn to a whimper. He says, this is a built-in recipe for an explosion of salvation and the miraculous and every kind of spiritual encouragement. He says, God is greater than. You know, evil will pay a great price as fear and death will be swallowed up in victory. And then he goes on to say, Haman will again hang on his own gallows, and it will happen in more ways than one. We are in the days where God will always be greater than. Whatever card the enemy plays, God will always have a trump card to take the hand. Don't bow to fear. Crush it instead. Courage is your friend. Jesus is your king. So that's where we all need to be. This is the time for us to stand firm in the faith. And the shakings really have only just begun. So now is the time where we start to, um, what do I want to say, uh, prepare ourselves, ready ourselves 
for the days that are coming, which will be even worse. So, you know, it's time for the preparations for us to, you know, learn how to stand and stand firm in the faith, faith, face of small things so that when bigger things come, you know, we've been prepped for it. Again, going back to the Word of God, we've got Psalm 91, a favorite. You know, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You know, God is our refuge and strength. He's our fortress. He's our defender, and so forth. So he says, you know, verse 5, You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall, shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. You know, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. So these are the you know, types of passages that we keep at the forefront. You know, and in those times where we might, you know, start to get a little nervous, we go back to them. And we, re you know, we read them over and over again. We commit them to our memory. We put them in our spirit and we draw on them because they are our strength. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication... With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then, remembering, of course, you know, Paul's words. He said, for if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. We close our eyes here in death. We open them in eternity with heaven, in heaven with God. It's a wonderful thing. Now, having said all of that, still to make another plug to say, since God is for us, who can be against us, do we still do any kind of preparation? Absolutely. Absolutely. You don't prepare to be afraid. You prepare to be prepped and ready. Okay? It's like, you know, when Harvey came through a couple of years ago, if you're prepped, you don't have to go running to the store to get any last-minute items. It's like last, last night I was going through the Internet, you know, working on putting stuff together for today, and I, I came across this one guy. He, he's got Marfugel News because his name is Marfugel. <laughs> That's his last name. I don't know what his first name is. But Marfugel... He lives in Washington. Well, that's where the one person who has died of the coronavirus. Now, remember, that person had all kinds of underlying health issues. Okay, so he was susceptible to, you know, really getting sick. But, so now, you know, people in Washington are going, ah! <laughs> a coronavirus person, you know, a person has died here. So now they're panic buying. And so he decided to go check out and see what was going on at Costco, Costco where he lives. And, uh, and he, he's taking his camera, and he's, he's filming everything, and he cannot believe the lines going into Costco and the lines of cars coming out of Costco. You couldn't get close to Costco. I couldn't see the building because of the lines of cars going both directions. And the guy you know, stopped a Costco person and said, so, do you have anything left? He goes, well, we still have some things in there, but all the, you know, disinfectants and Clorox and all that sort of stuff, that's all gone. He said, but there's still other things. But yeah, to get in and be around that sea of humanity, which, by the way, is not a good place to be in the, in the midst of, you know, any kind of a virus running around. And I don't care if it's the coronavirus or the flu or whatever. Being in big groups of people is not a good idea. But if you don't prepare ahead of time, that's where you're going to end up to try to find something. 
So, you know, we have Hebrews 11 here. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. Jump down to verse 7. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. He prepared. God said, this is what's coming. This is what you are to do. He did not fret while he was doing it. Okay? I mean, when he first laid that first board down, he goes, well, it's not going to rain yet. Because <laughs> there wasn't an ark built yet. All right? It took him 120 years to do it. And I can't imagine, you know, anybody building a boat. Well, of course, it was an ark. It was just a box, more or less. But they never had rain. They never had a flood. And for God to say, this is what you're going to do, I am sure Holy Spirit was telling him, okay, this is how you do it, because he'd never seen anything like that before. So, you know, here he does this thing. 120 years later, you know, as he's putting the last nail in or, or you know, coating it with the last bit of pitch, then he's like, okay, you know. Of course, now he's putting in all the food and all this sort of stuff. God's calling the animals. But he's ready. He does not have to be afraid because he's ready. All right? Joseph, he's not in the table of the faithful. But when Pharaoh had the dream of the seven good years, followed by the seven years of famine, the Lord gave Joseph the plan. This is what you are to do. In the seven good years, this is what you do. So that in the seven years of famine, you will have food. So you prepare ahead of time. You know, just to be prepared. Okay, it's not panicking to prepare. It's not lack of faith to prepare. It is preparing so that, you know, you don't end up with the panic shoppers. There was, a, there was a video in Italy. You know, they were panic shopping. And on, on camera, you know, there was a, I guess they were fighting over something. Anyway, a guy, guy kind of reached across the aisle and slapped this lady across the face. Like what? Income security. <laughs> you know, so it's like, you don't want to be there. You know, you don't want to be there. So the more preps you can have, the better off you are. All right? So, now, here's the deal, though. I can't tell any of you how to prepare. Because I don't live in your household. <laughs> I don't know what you need. I only know what I need. And I can only say this is what yeah, I think you should be doing. But, anyway, I can't make you do it. So, anyway, today was just a reminder. This is where we are. You know, this, this video that we saw, this guy does this every month. Puts a video like, the, people submit videos to him, and then he puts something like this together so that we can kind of have a, a catalog of what's going on in the earth. Because, you know, we don't get this kind of stuff unless somebody shows it to us. This person here who does the mass animal death list, he does this too. Every single month he follows it. But it says here at the top of this one, note, due to time constraints, we no longer report every event. He was doing every event. He says we no longer report every event, so the numbers are lower than they should be. But already in uh, from January 1 to February 5th, there had been 54 known mass animal deaths, events, so far this year. So it's like, wow. So a lot's going on. God is in control. God is in control. There is nothing going on that he doesn't know about. It's like the coronavirus. And he says, he was there when the, these evil people with wicked intentions were putting this virus together. And he tweaked it. Do you think they noticed it? No, because what he did was, you know, an invisible, powerful act of him, himself. 
But I'm sure they're scratching their heads wondering, well, why isn't it worse? (laughs) We know why it isn't worse. Because God is involved. And so, you know, that's a very, very good thing to us. But keep in mind, God is in control. We have his word to rely upon. We have him to rely upon. You know, there are steps that we can take in order for us not to be, you know, uh, concerned, panicked, worried when things, you know, even get worse. But those are the things that only you can do. I can warn, other people can warn. But, you know, I just wanted to kind of let you know where we are at this point. Okay? Amen.